my dad's a police officer, so oh, she taught at- me how to drive. Arresting a family member for a crime is an emotionally taxing experience for law enforcement officers. Balancing their duty to uphold the law and seek justice, law enforcement officers may find it profoundly heartbreaking to discover the extent to which a loved one has deviated from the right path. These are two scenarios illustrating the challenges cops face when duty requires them to arrest their own family members. Let's start with Teresa. On the 28th of December, 2022, a witness reported seeing a white vehicle strike a traffic pole and hastily leave the scene. A section of the vehicle's bumper had fallen off due to the collision. 15 minutes after the call, the police found the vehicle at a gas station across the road, and to their surprise, the driver turned out to be the last person they expected. Yeah, I had a drink. Okay, how old are you? 21. You're 21? Yeah. My dad is, um... Uh, is Who is that? John Lee. John Lee? Okay. When officers began questioning Teresa, the very thing she mentioned is, her father is a sheriff in the department, seemingly under the assumption that this connection would either prompt her release or influence the situation in her favor. Okay. Which way did you take to go from Applebee's to here? Um, I went around um, at the light at Route 9, and I came back from here, and then around back, and then here. Okay. Did you hit that pole that's over there? No. You hit the utility pole? I didn't pole? Hit anything. Because no. your bumper's in the yeah, middle no. of the road. No, my, um, I hit the, so do you see on this side? Yeah. I hit this. Okay. At my, um, How long ago? Uh, like, about a month ago, my ex's. Okay. Because he broke up with me and I broke up with him. And All right, go hang about back over there. Keep your hands yeah. in your pockets, please. It's okay. I'm sorry. Listen, your bumper's in the road over there. Okay, okay. did you just hit that pole? No, I promise you I did not. No? So if someone brings that bumper over here, it's not going to match up perfectly. You're coming from Applebee's, you're telling me. You went out that way. Everything's matching up. Witnesses said they saw a white car cross over in this direction, and I happened to find your car parked here with no off. with no bumper. The bumper was off. Okay. All right. When officers reattached the bumper of the vehicle, which they found on the side of the pole, it appeared to be a match for her car. Yeah. Did you hit the traffic pole that's no, right there? Not hit the traffic pole. Do you not remember hitting a traffic pole? not hit the traffic pole, I promise you. So your bumper's in the middle of the road over there and there's a pole down. This part was hanging off already because I already hit something. Okay. When I, I, I hit a deer in Pennsylvania because I go to school in Kentucky and the, the, this part was hanging off already. Okay. However, Teresa claimed that the bumper was already broken in Pennsylvania, suggesting she thought she could outsmart the police. Do you smoke marijuana recreationally? No, no? I do not smoke marijuana. What do you prescribe that you put? That I'm a, you had when I'm I, a soccer uh, athlete. I understand. I What's do. the prescription medicine that you had that I? I can I call my dad, who's the sheriff's officer? Let the one officer come here, who's who's out with your other part of your bumper. He's going to talk to you, and then we'll go from there. Okay. Well, co- you go to college? Yes, I go to. soccer captain there. Okay. I do not smoke marijuana universally. Do you do any recreational no. drugs? I prescribe anything else? What's the other? What's the other? How old are you? I'm 21. 21? I had to drink okay. Applebee's and I'm like scared out of my mind right But now. Teresa, I explained to you this before. Lying isn't going to get you anywhere. Lying. At least you know the You're truth. You just lied. Lying. You just lied. We just caught you in a lie. Can you tell me? I just found this piece over by the traffic light by Lowe's. You said you, that piece fell off in Pennsylvania. That's you told me you hit a deer. You told me a, like a whole here. bunch I of stories. I hit a deer in Pennsylvania. Can I ask my dad? Please ask my dad. You just had a telephone a traffic light. She further accused that it might be from another similar vehicle, which didn't make much sense. Over the next 15 minutes, Teresa mentioned her father's name more than five times seemingly aware that invoking his influence would tilt the situation in her favor, or that's what she thought. Lying doesn't help anything. Where I'm were you coming lying. from? 
I came from Applebee's. I had one drink. I what, okay, after Applebee's, where'd you go? I, I came from there, the the traffic light that's right there, and then the, I came around and there because my house is... I would have to go for the night traffic light, so there... Okay, that doesn't really make too much sense either, considering that the traffic light that you took out was on the corner. So, so why here. it's right there. Here's, I'm just going to draw this out for you. So here's the corner for the back entrance for Lowe's. Your vehicle came and impacted it on the passenger side, hitting the traffic light. So that means that you're coming from down in a different part of Lanesville Road. Can you see that line right, or Applebee's right there? Yeah. Okay, so I would go that way, I would go that way, which Lowe's is right there. Then I would go the traffic light to the LA Fitness, which is right there, which is my gym. Then I would go that way. Which is goes down to the quick check, which is that way, and I would make the right that is that way, and it's pretty wide road. Yeah, that does that doesn't make too much sense considering where the damage was and where the pulley that that was. So here, ready? Bladesville Road. Yes. Lowe's is on the right. You hit the traffic. You hit the traffic light on the right hand side of Lowe's with the passenger side of your vehicle. Which is where this piece was, which matches identically, which didn't fall off in Pennsylvania, which fell I know off on Lanesville Road. I know it didn't fall off in Pennsylvania. I know that. I hit a deer in Pennsylvania. Well, you also hit a telephone pole today, okay. or a traffic light today. And I, I must have hit something today. I'm sorry. So you, you don't know that you hit a, tele, a, a traffic light. I did not hit a traffic light today. So you mean to tell me that's just coincidence that this was I on? I did not hit a traffic light today. So again. You need to tell me that this is just a coincidence that this piece was found it's right next to a traffic light. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that. I was coming home from my boyfriend's house the one day where I hit a crossroad. He would just call my dad, who's a sheriff's officer, he would tell you this. I hit a traffic or What's up? Yeah. She's got guacamole everywhere. She's got guac everywhere. I was trying to figure out what the green stuff was, and I saw That's not Applebee's bag. chips and guac. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I don't know. This this. In Pennsylvania, I'm saying that I hit a, a, a thing in here, and this damaged this here, and then I must have hit something today, and then this fell off. I'm not saying that I'm lying. I'm saying, like, and, I, I'm, and I'm, I'm explaining to you that you hit a traffic light at the corner of Lanesville Road in the back entrance for Lowe's. Okay. And then you left the scene. I did not be... Did, did you call 911? Did you report it? No, I did, did not. You, did I you drive over here? So you yes, left the scene. I, I did. You didn't report it. I was getting gas because I was at zero. What, uh, what, it's that traffic light that is right in the middle by Lowe's and LA Fitness right there? Yeah. That one? So it's the one on the corner. On the corner? So if you're coming this way? Yeah. Road, yeah. On the corner. Yeah. Like, if you were to go to the back entrance yeah. for Lowe's, yeah. it's the one right before that entrance. On the low side. On the low side? Yeah, this tire is all, this rim's all messed up too on this side. So I, that's already messed up. That's what it was? But the other accident. I know. I was right next to. Yeah, I know. I was at Duncan and the guy backed into me in this, this accident. Listen, are you just scared you're going to get tickets or something? Yes. Is that all it is? Yes. So you want to just tell the truth? Yes, I'm telling you the so truth. So when after Applebee's, did you hit a t traffic pole? I think I hit something. I remember hitting something. You can't miss it. It lights up. It's red, green, and yellow. I remember hitting something after Applebee's. But okay. I'm saying, like, and did you drive away because you're scared because you had maybe had one drink and you think you're drunk? Yeah. And you might get arrested, but you don't seem like you're drunk? Yes. Is that what's going on? So you drove away because you're scared? Yes. So you might get some tickets and maybe you might get arrested? Is that why? Yes. Okay, so now we're starting to tell the truth, right? I remember hitting something, but I remember, like, like from, like, before this, I already hit something, and he, he was... So you're saying there was some accident. damage, but obviously your bumper is over this, there, like this officer was saying. This was already damaged. Okay. This was already okay. damaged. This fell off because of already damaged. Okay, but it fell off on Lane's Mill, where the pole is in the middle of the road. Okay. Just call my daddy to tell you. Well, here's, here's the thing. Promise your dad, the sheriff's officer, wasn't driving your vehicle today. Your he dad, the sheriff's tell officer. You, it's already damaged. He already reported to the insurance. Well, listen, he already reported everything. Pump the brakes. You're 21. You're an adult. We're trying to figure out what happened with you and driving and leaving the scene of the a, crash. I hit a curb. You hit a traffic signal. Oh, I hit a curb. Yeah, you went up the curb. You hit the traffic signal. The traffic signal fell down and you left. I was texting. 
that's why, and I really had damage. A few minutes later, they uncovered the truth. Teresa admitted to hitting something, confessing that she was not only drunk but also texting while driving. Three driving offenses, each carrying its own potential punishment. I just need to talk to one phone. Yeah, I think I think she, she's scared. She's hanging out with a boy or something, and the dad is. I don't know. This makes no sense at all. Yeah, she doesn't want. Yeah, exactly. Something like that. She just spun around or something, or she's going to a guy's house or something. Who knows? Yeah, Teresa. Teresa, what's your dad's name? John? Hey, John, how are you? Uh, so your daughter is a and Following the phone call, her father, John, conceded that Teresa had collided with a deer earlier, causing damage to the front right bumper. But the damage from the earlier collision with the deer was far less than what the car was enduring right now. Within just five minutes, her father arrived at the scene to discuss the situation with the cops. Yeah, so you know where back at Church for is? Yes. yes. Where like LA Fitness is and that intersection? Yes. So, look out the telephone call by the close side. This was intact. Okay. Um, this piece was missing, but these scratches here, Those were all that's all from... So what time do you stop her at? Because uh, she probably got nervous, and I'm not saying that's that yeah. we know that's not an excuse. I get it. But what do you think time do you think that initial call came? Because she probably hit it and was like, Dad, what the f do I do? Probably, I would say, somewhere between 1045 and 11. That's about right. When her father arrived at the scene, there was an expectation that John might attempt to make excuses to extricate Teresa from the situation. However, he was merely gathering all the details to make a clear assessment. The police, suspecting his intentions, conducted a field sobriety test, and the results were contradictory. Teresa was subsequently arrested for DUI. Upon reaching the station, her blood alcohol level was tested, revealing it to be twice the legal limit. Now let's move to the second case. On August 27, 2021, Deputy Corey Alcantar from the Whitman County Sheriff's Office observed a 2013 Honda Accord making an improper turn near Monroe Street and Stadium Way. Consequently, he initiated a traffic stop and the vehicle pulled into the parking lot of Willow Place Apartments. The driver was identified as 19-year-old Ashley Hollinger. Hello. Hi. Stops being recorded. Do you have your license, registration, proof of insurance? Do you have your driver's license? It's right around the corner somewhere. Like, it's at home. Oh, it's at home, okay. Yeah. Alright, what's your last name? Hollinger. H L. Okay. Oh. First name? Ashley. A-S-H-L-E-N. During the stop, Ashley could only provide Deputy Alcantar with her registration, lacking her license or proof of insurance. She mentioned that her father was a police officer with the Port of Seattle Police Department. Noticing bloodshot and watery eyes, along with the smell of alcohol on her breath, Deputy Alcantar inquired about her alcohol consumption. I don't know. No, you don't know? I All was right. a little fast, I will give you that. All right, <laughs> yeah, you, you were hauling a little like, bit. No. All right, so as you were making that right-hand turn, yeah. okay, you, rather than turning in the outside lane, which was closest yes. to you, you turn into the inside lane, which is furthest from you. Which is what I got marked down on, so... You got marked down on that? On the, yeah, and oh my dad my is actually a... My dad's a police officer, so he oh, taught at? me how to drive. It's Seattle, Port of Seattle. Oh, Port of Seattle? Okay. Yeah, All right. <laughs> well, give me a second, I'll be right back with you, okay? Ashley, you want to hop out real quick? Yeah. All right, yeah, just come back here. Okay. All right. Hey, how old are you? I'm 19 and a half. He's 19? Yeah. Okay. How much alcohol do you have tonight? 
not a lot and I'm like really nervous I get very but um like not a lot at all not a lot not, no okay so like how many how many beers or shots you like a beer and a, like maybe a couple like white claws a couple white claws so how many white claws Two, two? one and a half. Okay, when was your last one? A couple hours ago. A couple hours, so two hours so ago? I thought, yeah, like maybe even three. It was like early today, at 10. Yeah. So at 10? Not early at all. Okay, so your last drink was at 10? Or like around 10? Yeah, at 10. Okay. All right, here's what I'd like to do, okay? okay. I do smell it coming from your breath okay. still, okay? Um, would you like to do some voluntary field sobriety test? Um, sure. It's up to you. I don't know what that means. So it's voluntary, is what I'm saying. Um, sure. Okay. Ashley admitted to having consumed three White Claws in the hours prior. Based on signs of impairment, Deputy Alcantar informed Ashley of the opportunity to perform voluntary field sobriety exercises. All right. So for this next one, okay, stand with your feet together, arms on your side like you're in the military. What you're going to do is pick either leg you're choosing. Whatever foot you decide to pick, you lift it approximately six inches off the ground like so with your foot parallel to the ground and yeah. point it out. It's gonna look like this. While looking down at your foot, you're gonna count it loud by 1,000s. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004, and so on until I tell you stop, okay? Important to keep in mind while doing this test, okay? Down your feet, count out loud by 1,000s. Keep your arms down at your side. Once you start the test, do not stop until I say finished, okay? Mm -hmm. All right, what foot will you be lifting up? Since it's an angle, probably this one. That one? Well, probably this one, I guess. The right one? Sure. Yeah. All right. Wait a second. Uh, it's like a low-hand angle, okay. All right. I'll do my left one. All right, sounds good. Okay. All right, you may begin. Uh, I'll do left, or right one. One and five, zero. Okay. Two, three, one Pick your foot up higher. The horizontal gaze nystagmus (HGN) revealed a lack of smooth pursuit in both eyes. During the walk and turn test, Ashley failed to walk heel to toe in a straight line. In the one leg stand test, she did not raise her foot as instructed. 18. Go ahead and stop. 18 and 30 seconds. Okay. So I'm gonna offer you another test. Okay. Completely voluntary, not lubed evidentiary breath test. Okay, you said your last drink was. At yeah. Okay. All right. You gotta blow. Okay. Go, 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 go. Stop. All right. So, you know what the legal limit in the state of Washington is for someone who's 19 years old? Nothing at all? Uh, no, not quite. So it's, it's point, point zero, zero, zero two. two. Yep. Okay. So point zero five one. Okay. So you're over the legal limit. Okay. So go ahead and turn around and put your hands behind your back. Okay. Be under arrest for DUI under 21. Following the field sobriety exercises, Ashley underwent a voluntary PBT test, indicating a BASI of 0.051%. Due to her performance and the PBT results, Deputy Alcantar arrested Ashley for driving under the influence. She was transported to the Pullman Police Department for processing. During questioning, Ashley waived her constitutional rights and admitted to driving under the influence. So this is the breath test. I'm gonna be reading. Okay. On the date and night, time and location of this arrest, I had authority to arrest pursuant to my agency's jurisdiction, RRCW 1093. Constitutional rights. You have the right to remain silent. You have the right at this time to an attorney. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. After being read the implied consent warnings, she agreed to a breathalyzer test. The ALCA test results showed a BACS of 0.039% nearly double the legal limit of 0.02% for motorists under 21. Post breathalyzer test, Ashley was released pending her first court appearance in Whitman County District Court. On October 28, 2021, 
she pleaded guilty to an amended charge